when I said one pointed. Yeah, that's what I, I meant rather integrated into itself as utterly quiet and and uh, unconcerned uh, about taking thought for what is ahead or what is behind simply simply being there uh, the word there isn't good either because it suggests that uh, there's a where and a here and all the rest of it uh, it is very difficult to to uh, to find it seems to me language to do justice to what you're saying uh, precisely because when we speak utterance is in time and and it is progressive it, it has a quality doesn't it uh, more like music than we see in graphic art you can stand before a picture whereas to to hear music and grasp its theme uh, you virtually have to wait until you get to the end, the end and gather it all up <laughs> okay. and with with language you have the same the same difficulty no i think so won't you when we are inquiring into this problem what is what is the nature and the structure of a mind and therefore the quality of a mind that is not only sacred and holy in itself but is capable of seeing something immense As we were talking the other day about suffering, personal and the sorrow of the world, it isn't that we must suffer. Suffering is there. Every human being has a dreadful time with it, and there is suffering of the world. And it isn't that one must go through it, but as it is there, one must understand it and go beyond it. And that's one of the qualities of a religious mind, in the sense we are using that word, that is incapable of suffering. It has gone beyond it, which doesn't mean that it becomes callous. On the contrary, it is a passionate mind. Hmm? Uh, <clears throat> one of the things, one of the things that that I have thought much about during our conversations is language itself. On the one hand, we say such a mind as you've been describing is one that that is present to suffering. It, 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 do, it does nothing to push it away, on the one hand, and yet it is somehow able to, to contain it, not, not put it in a vase or, or a barrel and contain it in that yes. sense. Uh, and yet the very word itself, to, to suffer, means to to undercarry uh, and it seems close to understand uh, over and over again in our conversations I've been thinking about the customary way in which we use language as as a use that that deprives us of really seeing the glory of what the word points to itself in itself. Uh, I was thinking about the word religion when, when we were speaking earlier. Yeah. Uh, scholars differ as to where that came from. On the one hand, some say that it, that it means to bind. The bind. Church Fathers uh, 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 spoke about that. And then others say, no, no, it, it, it means uh, uh, the numinous or the splendor that cannot be exhausted by thought. Uh, it seems to me that, wouldn't you say, that, that uh, there's another sense to bind that is not a, 
a negative one in the sense that uh, if one is making this act of attention, uh, one isn't bound as with cords of ropes. No. But one, one, is, one is there uh, or here. You see, so I, now again, let's be clear. <coughs> when we use the at word attention, there's a difference between concentration and attention. Yes, yes. Concentration is exclusion. I concentrate. Mm -hmm. That is, bring all my thinking to a certain point. Whereas, and, and therefore, it is excluding, bar building a barrier so it can focus its whole attention on that, whole concentration on that. Whereas attention is something entirely different from concentration. In that there is no exclusion. In that there is no resistance. In that there is no effort. And therefore no frontier, no limits. How, how, would you, how would you feel about the, the word receptive in this respect? Again, who is it that is to receive? Already we've made a division, division. with that word. Yeah. I think the word attention is a really very good word. Because mm. it, it not only understands concentration, not only sees the duality of reception, the receiver and the received, and also it sees the nature of duality and the conflict of the opposites. Mm -hmm. And attention means not only the brain giving its energy, but also the mind, the heart, the nerve, the total entity, total human mind, giving all its energy to be at, to perceive. I think that's, <coughs> that's the meaning of that word for me at least, to be attentive, attend, not concentrate, attend, that means listen, See, give your heart to it, give your mind to it, give your whole being to it, to attend. Otherwise you can't attend. If I'm thinking about something else, I can't attend. No. If I'm hearing my own voice, I can't attend. There's a metaphorical use of the word waiting in Scripture. Uh, it's interesting that in English, too, we, we use the word attendant uh, in terms of one who waits on. Uh, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to penetrate the, the uh, notion of, of waiting uh, and, and patience in relation to this. I, I think this, so waiting again means one who is waiting for something. Again, there is a duality in that. And <coughs> when you wait, you are expecting. Mm -hmm. Again, a duality. One who is waiting, <coughs> about to receive. So, if, if we could, for the moment, hold ourselves to that word, attention, then we should inquire what is the quality of a mind that is so attentive that it is, that it has understood, lives, acts in relationship and responsibility as behavior, mm -hmm. and has no fear psychologically 